On May 11, 2021, on the outskirts of Athens, Greece, in a luxury villa, a murder was committed. Catherine was smothered with a pillow in her sleep by three thugs who broke into her home. Was this a random home invasion robbery, or did someone premeditate against the couple? When the police dug deeper, they discovered an incredible truth that, as it turns out, it was all a lab of conspiracy, and the man behind it turned out to be. Please stay tuned to this video as I restore this case to you. But Catherine Crouch, a 19-year-old British girl who was supposed to have a great life, was brutally murdered in a horrific home invasion and robbery. She was living with her husband, Bobby Shemagnistopoulos, in a villa on the outskirts of Athens, Greece, when three thugs broke into their bedroom, put a gun to Bobish's head, tied him to the bed, and then brutally brutalized Catherine after the crime. Police found Catherine and her seven-month-old puppy dead, with only Babs and their newborn daughter surviving. The case has shocked the entire Greek society and the police are baffled, not understanding what kind of murder the couple has provoked to go up to them in such cold blood. Born in England, where she spent most of her childhood, Catherine Crouch moved with her parents to Greece at the age of eight. What Catherine spent most of her teenage years acclimatizing to the Greek customs and living a traditional Greek, Catherine is the daughter of a retired engineer, a family that leads a fairly affluent lifestyle. As Catherine entered her teenage years, she began to think about her future. She had been studying hard and doing well, but it was at this point that she met a man named Bobbish. Catherine was only 15 years old when she met Bobbish in 2017, but Bobbish was 29 years old at the time. Twice as old as her and Catherine was underage, but they married two years later, in 2019, while Catherine was still a minor anyway. Catherine and Bobbish got married and everything seemed to be great after that. They seemed very happy and everything went well. At least that's what it looks like to an outsider. But behind closed doors, things hard at all what they appear to be. There are two versions of the story of the case. And it's up to you to decide which one you're inclined to believe. Catherine's father, David, said Catherine and Bobbish frequented a local restaurant near Athens. They had been to the restaurant countless times in the past. It was their favorite place. Over time, Bobbish and the owner of the restaurant became close friends. At this time, Bobbish was a helicopter operator, a job he was very proud of. Bobbish was a very confident pilot with a lot of flying experience. Anyone in him knew that being a pilot wasn't just a job for Bobbish. It was a status symbol, naturally. As Bobbish and the restaurateur talked again and again, Bobbish's experiences as a pilot became a frequent topic of conversation. But one day, the conversation took an unpredictable and dark turn when, according to David, the restaurant owner started talking to Baz about his secret business of smuggling illegal goods around the country. But, in fact, that's probably why he opened the restaurant in the first place, after all. What better way to launder money than through a lucrative business? David said the restaurant owner approached Bobbish and told him about a gang he was in. The gang had been experiencing some transportation problems lately, so to speak, and he felt that Babs was the perfect person to solve them, with Bobbish easy access to a helicopter. Smuggling goods by air is the best way to smuggle goods around the country, which keeps police away from any potential drought sites, as drug dogs and drug officers do not patrol the air, and Bobbish either voluntarily or under duress, reportedly agreed to this, and in the process, Bobbish did not seem to realize that this job would take away everything from him, including his wife and daughter. David said that Bobbish was a fool. That he was a good flyer, but had no business sense or understanding of the importance of secrecy. He told Catherine all about the smuggling he was involved in, thus inviting her to be killed. I think we all understand that if you do something unseemly, the best thing you can do is to never let anyone know, including your nearest and dearest. It's common sense, it wasn't a fool or it was to protect them, after all, if they don't know about you. They won't be implicated when things fall apart, and this will keep your loved ones out of danger, so if things go wrong, you're the only one who has to take responsibility for yourself, not them. The, but Bobbish didn't seem to understand this, and as soon as he had made a deal with the restaurateur, he told Catherine everything, and Catherine, being the good person that she was, presented this new way of making money, though it could bring very money to the little family. It was not the kind of money Catherine wanted, but she did not stop her husband from. When Catherine realizes that her words have no effect on her husband, Catherine's father says that Catherine is threatening to leave Babs, and Babs doesn't want that to happen. But the problem is, 
Dan's new boss isn't going to sit around and do nothing either, so they force Bobbish to kill Catherine. Deedit says that all this was told to him in a handwritten letter which was handed to him after Bobbish had been imprisoned, and Deedit said that Bobbish wanted to set the record straight and felt that Catherine's father had a right to know the truth, but that for many people, this so-called truth was a lie, especially given the fact that Bobbish had told a completely different story before, in fact. Bobbish's attorney said that the story was completely fabricated by Kathleen's father. That the letter never existed, and that, according to Bobbish's public statements, he didn't kill his wife at all. In fact, he was just another victim. It was May 11, 2021, a normal day for Bobbish and Catherine, until nightfall, when at some point late in the night, three gunmen broke into the couple's home, where they were joined by Catherine, dads, their seven-month-old husky, and their newborn daughter, Lydia who, as soon as they entered, seized the puppy and strangled it with a leash. The three men, they then went upstairs, where they took up their guns and demanded that the couple hand over all their money. Bobbish said they had about 10,000 euros and told them where the money was, but Catherine did not give in easily. She began to struggle with the assailants, but the assailants threatened to harm little Lydia, and eventually Catherine was overpowered, and then smothered her with a pillow, and fled from the scene, but before they left they tied up and gagged Babs. Rendering him unconscious for a few minutes, th this all happened around 4.30 a.m. When Bobbish finally woke up, he managed to break free of the ropes and call the police for help. But when the police arrived on the scene, it initially seemed that everything Dabs said was true, though there was one questionable point. When they checked the home security footage, the police realized that the thugs had stolen the memory card. Meaning that there was nothing left but a mess and a creepy crime scene, that Catherine's funeral was held soon after and photos from the funeral showed Bobbish holding Catherine's mother as she cried, but just weeks later, police made a breakthrough in the case of, as investigators worked to identify the crimes that took place in the couple's home that night, they began to find some holes in Dad's story. Police had asked to see Kathleen's cell phone from the night of her death to better determine her final moments and what happened before the murder. While going through Catherine's cell phone, the police got her fitness data, and that's when things got a little weird, because if you have a smartphone or a smartwatch, your device is always collecting data on you. Most people think it's just our location data, but if you have a smartwatch, such as an Apple Watch or a Huawei watch, for example, then your phone will also record your heart rate, your body movements, and, in some cases, even your body temperature or other details about your health. But when investigators looked at Catherine's health data, they found that Catherine's health data, which recorded her sleep patterns, that Catherine had been sound asleep prior to her death, that and her location data shows that she never left her bed at all, which is completely inconsistent with what Bobbish told investigators. And then there's the fact that Bobbish claimed the attack happened around 4.30 a.m., but investigators learned from their home security system that the memory card was removed at 1.20 a.m., a very accurate time, more than three hours before Bobbish claimed the case began. Catherine's Apple Watch also showed that her heart stopped beating at 4.20 a.m., again at odds with the timeline Bobbish stated. Considering all this information, the police surmised that between 1.20 and 4.20, Bobbish had been staging the crime scene. Police believe he made several killing attempts on Catherine during this time, covering his tracks along the way to make things look like a break-in, but a bigger question many here are wondering is... Why? That's the heart of the matter. Depending on which version of the story you believe, Catherine's father's version? Or Dad's version of the story? Was Dad really threatened by a mysterious gang member? If that's the case, then he probably killed his wife because he was threatened by someone else. I trust this version more than but in statements made during Bobbish trial, he even claimed that the marriage between the two was riddled with abuse that he claimed to have killed Catherine because he had enough, because Catherine kept abusing him, so he smothered her with Catherine's own pillow while she slept. But if this is true, then why did he kill her dog? This part seems a little excessive. In any case, in the end, Bounce was happy with life in prison, with the possibility of applying for parole after 20 years, and another 11 years for killing Kathleen's dog. After Bobbish conviction, Catherine's family was very unhappy with the outcome. Catherine's father, who thinks there's a lot more truth behind the story that Babs isn't telling. Considering that Bobbish has changed his version of the story at least three times since the original trial. It's quite possible that Father Catherine was right, and we may never know just how deep this rabbit hole goes.